So depending on we, what we have been doing during the day, maybe a lot of time in the computer or the phone, it feels good to drop the head. So we actually stretch the back of the neck. Hi everybody, welcome to this yin yoga class. My name is Ellie and today we're going to be practicing some poses that will help us to stretch the entire body. We're going to be stretching from the toes all the way up to the fingers, hopefully to help you to release tension, to let go any blockages that we may have somewhere. You can practice this class at any time. Remember that um, the time of the day that you practice basically it will change the intention of the practice it will change a little bit of uh, more benefits in one area than others but honestly yin yoga should be practiced every day whenever you have time so for this practice you may not need any prop maybe having um, a pillow or a blanket or a cushion uh, just in case you feel uncomfortable when you're seated or when you're pressing against the feet like in the first pose that we're going to be doing which is antler pose that we're going to be sitting on our heels anyway for now have that with you have it ready and we're going to start we're gonna Come to a comfortable seated position first, closing the eyes. Using this time just to recognize that natural pattern of breathing without changing anything. We don't need to engage into any particular pranayama technique. It's just observing how that natural breath moves our body. Taking a few moments to observe if that air only moves your chest or it goes all the way down to your belly. Just to start with the observation of something that we take for granted. This is something that we do thousands of times every day since we are born. So pause in a moment to see, to feel, to connect. Using always the inhalation and the exhalation through the nose. And after we have observed what this natural pattern of breathing does to our body, we can actually consciously start engaging into a more yogi breathing. The yogi breathing is that natural pattern that the babies have. If you observe how a baby breathes, the belly goes all the way up and all the way down. And we have lost that when we are adults. Our breath becomes very shallow, very superficial and stays in the chest. So we want to start moving that air all the way down to the belly. So inhaling maybe a little bit deeper, moving that air all the way down to the belly and exhaling fully all the way out. Observing maybe some changes in how that feels. Perhaps you notice a uh, greater intake of oxygen which is very beneficial not only for our physical body but also for a mental and emotional self taking a few more moments here to be with your breath Good. Very gently and softly, we're going to 
blink our eyes open. If we were to aim to keep that pattern of breathing throughout the whole practice and hopefully off the mat as well. This is the healthiest way to breathe. Good. So we're going to come to the first pose, antler pose. And this is the pose that I was mentioning that maybe if you feel some discomfort in the top of your feet when you're seated on your heels because you are pressing against the floor, you can put a blanket underneath. Um, but if not, actually that is the aim of this pose. We're aiming to stress, to compress the toes and especially the top of the feet. So we're going to be in antler pose for just for a minute to start sinking into this yin mode. It's very rare that we stimulate our feet in, in yoga practices and especially the top of our feet, right? When we practice more yang classes where majority of the time we're standing. So it's a good idea to give some love to the top of the feet as well. There are a lot of joints, ligaments, and tendons there, there as well. So this pose is great to use our body weight to compress the top of our feet. Only a few more seconds here. And I don't want to go too much time into this pose because we're going to do it again later. Just to start stimulating that area that we're going to be working because we're going to be working from head to toes. Good. So we're going to shift our body weight to one side to come back to sit it, releasing the feet, opening your legs and observing, observing what is, what is the sensation that we feel in our, in that area that we were um, stimulating the top of the feet. Um, you may feel some sensations of warmth, of, of moving, blood, energy, um, like tingling sensations, which is good. And if you don't feel anything, that's good too. Don't worry, okay? Um, believe me, a lot of things are happening even though you are not um, feeling it. Good, so we're going to stay in this shape. So this is when the bolster, the cushion comes handy. Because if we struggle sitting like this and you tend to fall back, um, so you can sit up on a pillow or a blanket so you can elevate the floor. This is one of the ways that we use props in the end to elevate the floor. If you're seated on something, you're elevating the floor for your pelvis, be mindful that we also need to elevate the floor for the knees. So we can roll a blanket, put something underneath, and you don't. if you don't have anything at hand right now, I don't want you to go and grab something, just stay there. You can micro bend the knees. So by flexing the knees, we avoid that extra stress that we're applying by lifting the pelvis and creating more space with the gravity and, and all that. Anyway, so we're gonna come to this dragon flight. There is not a split, so no need to open way too wide. Um, and we're gonna start walking our hands forward. Normally this, the, the feet, for majority of us, will drop in. Allow the toes to drop in. Allow the knees to drop in. We want to keep the muscles of the hip area, which is the area that we're targeting, as soft, as um, relaxed as possible. So we're gonna walk the hands forward. And in the moment that you feel that the asana is already touching your body, that already something is changing, you stop here. You're gonna be in dragon flight for two minutes. And this is one of the principles of yin yoga. Finding the edge means that starting the asana from the beginning, starting the asana not from the urge of having the chest on the floor, for example, in, the, in this case, but inviting gravity and time to keep pushing and pulling your torso down. That's the role of gravity. That's why um, we use props in a different way. In the yin teacher training um, that I teach, I 
discuss this with my students that um, having a block here on the forehead is stopping the gravity to invite you to come deeper into the pose. And it's not necessarily that we aim to have the chest on the floor, but we aim to open up those connective tissues that normally are not stimulated, like tendons, ligaments, joints, bones. And so we don't want to stop gravity. So that's why the props are used in a different way. Otherwise, we will be practicing restorative and not yin. And I have to say that is one of the biggest aha moments that we have in the training when I'm teaching this to my students. Anyway, so we're going to stay in this pose for like 30 more seconds. So I'm going to give you this space of silence. very softly mindfully start walking your hands towards you stopping in the center observing that is called rebound that group of feelings sensations the blood moving the water moving the changes that we may experience so it's important to pause in between poses and moving softly. Good. So this time we're going to be, I'm going to be mirroring probably, of course you are facing me, we're front to front, so I'm going to be facing, I'm going to be mirroring you. So I'm going to, we're going to bend your right knee. So bring your right knee, your right foot in. And we're going to do half dragon flight and we're going to add a twist. And a twist is that we change the, um, level of the shoulders in relationship to the pelvis. So we're going to move, we're gonna shift the shoulders and face your left leg. So we're gonna be working over the left leg. Once we have shift, now we know that we are twisting from this, the part of the spine that is meant to twist, the thoracic spine, and then we start coming all the way forward. Coming into this forward fold where the twist and the twist is actually lengthening and stretching muscles in your back and the side of your torso hands as well the same as the other one you can have your palms facing up and if you have your, fang, your palms facing down just make sure that your hands are not stopping you from going down you're actually surrendering into gravity, but also the hands are not pulling you forward. Avoiding this um, urge or this conditioning of going somewhere. One of the beautiful things about yin is that we practice um, to become more aware of what is happening inside. So. I'll allow you to, to be in silence with yourself and your sensations. prepare ourselves to come out of the pose walking your hands towards you and 
stopping at the center. Ooh, feeling definitely my one of my sides feels different than the other one. Good. Now we're going to extend the right leg and we're going to bend the left knee, bring the left foot towards your groin and same, same. So the pelvis remain the same, so it keeps the sacrum and the lumbar spine is stable, which they don't need to twist. And now we shift towards the other side, facing the right leg and moving forward. Remember that we want to start the asana in the first place where the asana touches the body. The head, the idea with the head is that you want to keep it aligned with the torso. That will be kind of like my main suggestion because the head is quite heavy. Sometimes, depending on we, what we have been doing during the day, maybe a lot of time in the computer or the phone, it feels good to drop the head. So we actually stretch the back of the neck. But because we have a lot of forward folds in the yin practice, if we drop the head all the time in all the poses, for some people, it can be too much for the ligaments of the neck. I know that happens to me. So the neck is not the target area, at least not in these poses. So it is okay to engage, to activate the muscles around the neck to hold your head and your neck aligned with the rest of the spine. Please find the variation, the, the asana, the shape that feels effective in your body. Effective means that we are targeting the area that we're meant to target without causing any distress or pain anywhere else that allow us to be in a stillness for a long period of time. We're gonna start moving our hands and our torso back to the center, pausing for a moment. Feeling, remember there is no rush, no need to jump to the next pose. So after the pause, now we, we're gonna bring both feet down to the floor just for a few moments, hands behind just to drop the knees side to side in case we feel any tension, especially in the side of the hips and the torso. Good. And now we're gonna have both legs together. So bringing both legs to the front to do the pose that in the end we call it caterpillar. Um, I always, and when I teach anatomy in the 200 hour and the, the courses that I teach as well, is that uh, let's avoid to remove, removing the fleshy part. Like it's very common to hear that cue because actually the muscles are there to serve as a cushion. We have the attachment of the hamstrings there in the ilium, which is that in the ischium, in the, that bone that is against the floor right now. So we don't want to overstress them. So leave them, uh, leave the bone where it belongs. <laughs> now the, the toes, they can drop out, they can drop in, they can stay straight as long as we have the muscles of the hips relaxed. Those are the, this is the area that we're stressing right now. We're moving from the toes up to all the way up to our upper body. Once you find your way into your legs, we come into caterpillar by moving forward. The two ways of practicing forward folds uh, in the end, especially, is either you can ground the spine, so 
and you can you can drop the head if that feels good for your neck as well that will intensify the stretch in the muscles of the back also you can keep your torso more straight like like straighter like the same length in the front and in the back meaning that the muscles of course will be more active but the stress will go more into the muscles of uh, from the glutes down instead of the glutes up so not necessarily it is not necessarily true that all the time all the forward folds in the end your back is rounded few more moments here having this nice stretch of the posterior body and gingerly moving in slow motion moving slower than you think you should move we're gonna come back up pausing in the center feeling enjoying i don't know you guys but i do enjoy a lot when i come out of the poses it feels everything that has been compressed and stretched and twisted releasing and letting go i love that sensation of letting go good so now we're going to shift to one side we're going to bend both knees we're going to gently move into child pose so no need to move your body all the way back just wherever you land for now bending the knees we, we're gonna do child pose two times in this practice so this the first one I will invite you to keep it with your knees together that will continue with the roundness of the spine that we have been cultivating from the previous poses again you can put a blanket um, between the floor and your feet or even in between your heels and your bum depending on what is happening in this area um, just as a matter of comfort mm -hmm. good once you find the shape with your legs we're going to start moving to the front allowing the forehead to drop down to the floor you can keep your arms in front of you or you can keep your arms behind you next to your feet that will change what happens to your shoulders any none of the variation is better than the other one because we are not practicing we're not aiming of how a pose looks like but it's about how it feels like few more moments here and we're going to use our hands to move our body up we're going to Come into tabletop, so moving your hips on top of your knees. So 
pausing for a moment into tabletop, allowing the spine to come back to its neutral, uh, neutral shape. We have been flexing a lot, so we want the spine to come back before we move to the next pose that it's a back bend. So we don't want to shift from flexion to extension or vice versa when we are working on the spine. It can be too much stress for a structure that is not symmetrical, actually has different curvatures. And speaking of symmetry, so we're going to do a pose that we have two options here. So we can practice melting heart pose when we move um, in a in a symmetrical way when we move both hands to the uh, to the front or we can um, do the asymmetrical version which is called quarter dog pose and if you choose the asymmetrical version of the pose i will let you know halfway so you can ch change side so how does it work we will um, keep our hips on top of the knees that's not going to change we are not going to go back we are not going to come forward. They're going to stay on top of the knees. We're going to move the hands forward. So if we decide to go for the asymmetrical version, we're going to bend the um, left elbow, placing the left forearm on the floor, keeping the right hand as far forward as possible, the uh, elbow, the right elbow off the floor, and we're going to rest the forehead on the forearm. Or if you decide to do the symmetrical version of the pose, so we will keep the left hand, same as the right hand, and we will drop the forehead and the head and the chin and the, the chin and the chest, whatever it makes to the floor. So find your variation. I'm gonna start timing soon. So I will let you know if you decided to do halfway. Um, or the asymmetrical when to change. So we're gonna start now. We're gonna stay here for three minutes. So three minutes in the melting heart pose, which in which both arms, both sides of the body are doing the same. A minute and a half in each side if you're doing the asymmetrical version. Whatever works for you, for your shoulders, for your elbows. I have to say that this is a challenging pose for me. My shoulders don't have a great range of motion, but I love it. It's a pose that simulates all the way from your fingers your shoulders, your spine, your hips, all the way down to your toes. A very complete pose. And a few more moments here before you change sides. If you are doing quarter dog, I will let you know. And if you need to change side, this is the moment. So extend the left hand all the way down, all the way to the front, bending the right elbow and resting your forehead on your right forearm. And all together, we will be here for another minute and a half. You were in the symmetrical version, just stay there. Hold poses for longer than in more active practices because we are passing the barrier of the muscles, the fascia, the nervous system, trying to get that stimulus all the way into ligaments, tendons, joints, bones. And for that we need Time. It's not about movement, it's about time that we apply the pressure, the stretch, the twist. 
Good. So we are gonna, everybody, we're gonna start coming off the pose, walking your hands gingerly. In yin yoga, it is important how we get into the pose, how we stay in the pose, but it's even more important how we come out of the pose because we are applying pressure, as I said, to these plastic tissues that they don't like to be moved very dynamically. So they're getting mushy and that is the short-term effect of the practice, being soft and mushy. So in the long term, in the long run, it will come um, more resilient tissues, moisturized, healthier. Good. So now from here, we're going to walk our knees to the side. We're going to come to this wide knee child pose that I talked to you before. So open your knees as wide as the mat, bring in your toes closer to each other and push your hips back. Your hands are still in the front because we're going to add a twist. So keep your right hand in front. Now we're going to thread the left hand in between, doing a twist, resting the posterior side of your left shoulder, resting your left ear and resting your head. Maybe you can keep your right uh, elbow off the floor, that is one option, or you can keep it on the floor, depending how your shoulders feel after that melting heart pose. Today, I'm gonna keep my on the floor. And we are going to be here for two minutes. You can close your eyes. Remember, you can listen to my voice. You may wanna see for a few moments, kind of to understand the pose that we're doing, but then we want to go inwards, pay attention, stay present. So keeping your eyes closed will help you to do that. And me giving you some spaces of silence definitely will help more. Start moving out of the pose. So bring your left hand back to the front, stopping for a moment in the center. Allowing the sensations to arise, if that is the case, just pausing in between sides. sides. Good. So keeping your left hand in front, we're going to start threading the right arm, placing your the posterior part of your right shoulder on the floor, the right ear on the floor, and the same same with the elbow, you can choose to keep it off the floor or on the floor. And observing how your hips keep sinking down. We are stretching the upper body, but without letting go of the stretch of the lower body. We have been stimulating, as probably you have noticed, all the way from the toes, the feet, the ankle, the shins, the hips. Now the torso, shoulders and arms. 
that is the idea of this class stretching the full body to release, to relax, to let go. Mm. I still have almost a minute to be here. Very mindfully, start bringing your right hand to the center, stopping in the center for a moment. I know that maybe your groins, that medial side of your legs is talking already. Yes, we have used this twist as an excuse also to stretch the inner side of your legs. We're going to come out of that soon as well. Good. So bring your torso up using your hands. And now observe your knees. And we're going to start bringing the knees slowly one by one to the center because we have been stimulating the tendons of the adductors for a bit now. And we're going to sit back into anther pose, a pose that we did at the beginning. So we have two options here because we're going to modify this a little bit. We can stay here as we did at the beginning. No problem. Let me see. Just I'm going to move to the front because I don't have much space there. So as I said, we can stay here. This is perfect. We're stressing the area that we want to stress. You can walk your hands behind you a little bit. That's good. You can walk them a little bit more and even allowing the knees to come off the floor. This may not be very comfortable, but who said Ian was comfortable? It's not. And here we are adding this um, ankle stretch. Only a minute, I promise. I'm timing the poses so we don't suffer unnecessarily. <laughs> and honestly, it is quite dis uncomfortable, but it's a needed discomfort. We usually don't stress our yin tissues or plastic tissues using the time and the stillness and they need it. They need this as, as much as the muscles need to be strong and flexible and elastic. And the more, the more we age, the more we need this. So hopefully we can incorporate the practice of yin every single day. An hour is great, 45 minutes is great, 30 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever time you have is perfect good and very mindful it's gonna start coming back and we're gonna go to tabletop and please avoid the urge that i see very often especially in vinyasa classes where we want to let go of tension especially in the feet that tap in we are stimulating a lot of tissues that are not necessarily muscles. Only the muscles love to be treated like, like that, like actively, dynamically. The yin tissues don't like that. So even if you're practicing a yin a yang class and, and you have been stretching your ankles or your toes, like we're going to do now, that is another pose. Uh, please avoid that urge of letting go of that sensation. It's better to be here in the stillness, allowing the blood, the water, the energy to flush back into that area that we were stressing. Mm -hmm. So now, same thing. We have the option to stay in under pose. Good, perfect. Or we have the option to 
do the toe stretch. So for this one, we will tuck the toes under and we're gonna sit on our heels. I know this sprawl is not a favorite, but is needed. So my little guy here, the little toe kind of like hide behind. So I have to make sure that he's also part of the party. And again, a minute, no more than that, because I know that is quite challenging for majority of us. We normally don't pay much attention to our feet, especially when it comes to uh, yoga practice. And there are a lot of tissues, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, fascia in the feet, and the feet are holding our weight all day long. We put our feet into these shoes, hopefully comfortable shoes. Majority of time they're not comfortable. So we need to give them some love. So I know that this toe stretch is maybe not your favorite part of the class, but we are stretching the whole body. So our toes are part, very important part of our body. Good, we did it, one minute, see? Everything in this life pass, good and bad. So now untuck the toes and again, avoid the urge of tapping. No need. Just allow those sensations to be. Good. Now we're gonna come down to sit because we are making our way to the floor. So, we're going to move into the next series of poses before closing the class. We still have like 10 more minutes to go. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to bring the uh, left foot on top of the right knee. So, the right foot is on the floor. The left ankle is on top of the knee. We're doing this figure that is called figure four or eye of the needle. So you can choose to stay here. This is great. Gravity is pulling the knee out. Option one. Option two, you can bring your right knee towards your chest and you can decide here to uh, grab your leg. So in between your thigh and your cuff, good to go. Or you can actually place your hands on your shin and good to go too. So choose a variation that works for you and allow gravity to drop your shoulders down to the floor. We're gonna be here for two minutes. You can close your eyes, your feet are relaxed. No need to actively flex the left ankle, there is no need. As long as everything is happy in this pose, as long as we don't have any um, discomfort anywhere, we are good to go. The target area of this pose is to stimulate the tissues around the, in this case, the left hip. So we are stretching the glutes, the posterior muscles of the hip, which are the glutes and the gluteus medius, a lateral muscle that we have in the hip joint. It gets quite tense just because we walk. And on top of that, if you do something that requires running, you cycling, if you do all these things, those muscles tend to be very tight and the hip becomes tighter. So doing poses like this helps to relieve, to release that tension. A few more seconds here.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop the right foot, if, if you were holding your right leg, drop your right foot on the floor. So the sole of your foot is on the floor. And now, keeping the legs exactly as they are in this figure four, we're going to shift the pelvis to the left and allow the left foot to come all the way down to the floor. So we didn't change the legs, we are just now moving the plane of the pelvis away from the plane of the shoulders. Because now we're in a twist. Remember, that is the anatomical definition of a twist. Changing the plane of the shoulders in relationship to the, place, uh, the plane of the pelvis. And we're going to be in this twist for a while, for a moment, for a while, for a few, for a few minutes. So enjoy the twist. Your hands can be in a T position. They can be in cactus. They can be above your head. So you can also incorporate that stretch in your arms. If, if your left shoulder is quite coming off the floor, it's fine. The twist requires many, many factors to keep both shoulders on the floor, or both knees, if that was the case, on the floor. So don't be so caught up on the aesthetic alignment of the pose. The way, as I mentioned before, the way I teach classes and the teacher training, the way I teach my students to, to teach and to practice and to think is in how a pose feels like and not necessarily how it looks like. We want the asanas to be effective. That is the key. We don't gain anything with the shape if it's not being effective. A few moments of quietness here. Start moving our legs up, keeping exactly where they are. Just moving from the floor, releasing the twist. And now we're going to move the left knee on top of the right knee. So before we had the left um, ankle, now is the left knee on top of the right knee. And we're going to bring our right leg towards our chest and we're going to grab our feet with the hands in this uh, reclined shoelace. And once you have your feet with you, you can drop your torso down to the floor. That is an option. Another option is to grab uh, your knees. You can have your hands on your knees, whatever makes, uh, whatever is available for you in order to stretch, especially the gluteus medius, that lateral muscle that we have in the hip joint. That it tends, it gets to be a little bit tense and majority of humans. Only a minute here in this nice stretch of the lateral side of the leg before moving into the other side. The minute is gone, so we're going to start releasing the feet, releasing both feet on the floor, just pausing for a moment there with both feet on the floor, maybe knees touching. Pausing in between sides before starting the sequence again. So now we're going to bring now the right um, ankle on top of the left knee making the figure four. Remember, we have options. Not necessarily both sides are the same. So not necessarily you have to do exactly the same that you did in the previous uh, leg in, in, in 
and you have to do the same in this one. So we can be here, option one, this is the figure four, allow the gravity to drop the knee down, we can grab the back of the thigh, or we can grab the front of the shin, the front of the lower leg. Wherever we are, we find a stillness, which is the second principle of the practice of yin yoga. The first one I mentioned before, finding the edge, that place where the asana starts touching the body. That is the beginning. We start there. Second principle is stillness. So that's why I give you options. So you are the best teacher to decide which option works for you. I cannot tell you because I don't know what you're feeling. So I try to give you options, you feel, which one feels effective, which one is targeting the area, which one is not causing distress anywhere else. And I can be here for a long period of time. Third principle of yin yoga, time. One more minute in this yummy stretch. We're gonna start letting go of the leg. You were holding your left leg, allowing the left foot to come down to the floor. And for the twist, remember we want to shift the hips to the right, allowing now the right foot to drop to the side. So we will place the right foot on the floor and done, we are in the twist. So decide what to do with your hands, with your arms, and enjoy this change of planes between pelvis and shoulders. I love this twist because it's not only working with the thoracic spine, it's also kind of like stretching the glutes all the way up from the spine. It feels a lot of stretch also in the lumbar fascia, which feels really good, unless in my body it feels really good after being seated for so long i spent a lot of time working in the computer now with the online academy that we have in sampurna i spend majority of my time either shooting videos or in front of a laptop so i'm pretty sure you do so you're also working from home probably so in general we spend a lot of time seated so this stretch just feels really 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 good <laughs> One more minute to go here. As much as we would love to stay in this stretch, we have to start coming out of the pose, bringing your legs back into the center. Now moving your right knee on top of the left knee, bringing your legs towards your chest. Again, options, grabbing your knees, grabbing uh, your shin, or grabbing your feet and dropping your torso down to the floor. One minute in this um, stretch for the gluteus medius, the abduct, one of the abductors.
few more seconds to go. Now we can let go of the feet or the legs, allowing both feet to come into the mat. Now placing both uh, soles of the feet together, allowing the knees to drop to the side in this supta butterfly, recline, recline butterfly. The closer your feet to the groin, the greater the stress in the groin area. The further away, the lesser the stress. And in the end, not necessarily um, more is better. The only more that is good in the end is time. Okay, so we want to find a variation that is effective, that you are stretching, applying this stimulus into the groin area without causing discomfort anywhere. Probably your lumbar spine is off the floor, creating this curvature there. Good. It's also something that we want in this pose. And it's the last pose before coming into Shavasana, so let's enjoy the last minute in this one. As much as I would love to stay here, we need to prepare to come into Shavasana. So using your hands, bring your knees together. I'm gonna hug the knees to the chest. If you need something for your Shavasana, maybe it's a little bit cold, be mindful if you have to find a blanket or socks. Remember that we have been stimulating plastic tissues for a while now, so you don't want to move too fast, too quick. Just prepare for Shavasana. Just grab what is needed. If you don't need anything, awesome. Okay, no decorations, not unnecessary decorations for the poses. Good, so we're gonna let go of the legs, of the knees, or opening your legs as wide as the mat so you can relax the area of your hips you can have your hands on your belly and your chest or you can have your hands next to your body palms facing up relaxing your torso your abdomen your legs your neck your face the muscles of your face are relaxed your eyes are closed I'm going to be practicing this Shavasana with you, so enjoy. I will take you out of it when time comes. Face relax, a ton inside of your mouth is relaxed. And you, the only thing that we need to do is to surrender and to and melt into your mat, dissolve into the mat and enjoy the silence of Shavasana.
mindfully and softly. Bring the awareness back into your body by wiggling your toes and your fingers, your hands. If you have more time and you decide to stay in Shavasana, please do so. You can stay in Shavasana for as long as you can, as you want. Otherwise, we're going to incorporate these little movements Lengthening and stretching our arms above our head, stretching our body. Bending the knees, keeping the feet on the floor. We're going to drop the knees to the side. And stopping in this side for a moment. Using your hands to... Come to a comfortable seated position, keeping your eyes closed. We're going to place our hands in prayer position in front of our chest, bowing our head down as a gesture of gratitude, thanking yourself for the time you took for this practice. I thank you all for joining me in this yummy stretch for the whole body i hope that you get all the benefits of this practice thank you so much and see you the next time namaste